The author of Hebrews believed that history had reached its apex, its last days in the coming of Christ. As a matter of fact, the first sentence of the book of Hebrews, the letter of Hebrews, better yet, the sermon to the Hebrews, uh, starts out that way, doesn't it? That in long ago, in many portions and in many different ways, God had spoken through the prophets and to the fathers. But now, and then here it is, in these last days, he has spoken in a son, in his son, uh, the one who had inherited the, uh, his own name, the divine name, and he um, rules and reigns at the right hand. And so that's the first sentence of uh, the book of Hebrews, really the first four verses, the prologue. And so this familiar New Testament idea is that um, the, the last days had been inaugurated with the coming of Christ, the first advent of Christ, and would be consummated at his return. And so whereas the Old Testament looked towards that day of the Messiah, the age of the Messiah, we see that in something like Joel 2, 28 to 32, um, Hebrews says that time is now here. These are the last days because God has now spoken a definitive and final word in his son. What else does he need to say? What else does he need to do? The redemption that had been anticipated, the redemption that had been promised, has now found its fulfillment, or as Paul would say, it's yes and amen in Christ. 